button. So hey, welcome back to the Alexandrian Codex. I'm Alex. This is Star <laughs> the Star Trek New Horizons mod for Stellaris. We are not playing this campaign or this campaign. I was playing, I mean, you can see off screen quite a bit, running some stress tests to see if I could replicate the crashes we're having with this save game with other save games, and I couldn't, which is a good sign. Well, it's a good sign and it's a bad sign. It's a bad sign because I don't know what the fuck is causing the problem. It's a good sign in that if we start a new game, the game, it looks like the problem goes away. Or at least is put off until a very, very, very late game. And it might be contingent on me recording or streaming at the same time that I'm running the game. The crash logs haven't been super helpful or insightful either. I'm not resentful about it. I'm, I'm frustrated and I want to find what it is so that if it's, if it's something repeatable and rep replicable I can pass it on to the mod team because if I've had it happen I'm sure someone else might have had it happen but whatever they're they're doing good work so first thing you might notice are the borders look different that is because I have turned off beautiful universe and I've turned off the thinner borders mod neither of those should have been having any compatibility issues they should not have been affecting gameplay or game performance at all whatsoever but just in the interest of Eliminating possible suspects, we are just running these Star Trek New Horizons and Star Trek New Horizons son content submods right now. That's it. So I, I went back in last night, made a save right where we left off. The only difference is that we have not, as of this save, declared war on the Vodbar. If you'll recall, and you probably don't have to think that hard to remember because, well, you know, for you, if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, it's probably been about as long for you as it has been for me, 24 hours, give or take. So, uh, we were, I just declared war on the VOD bar, and the game decided, ah, yes, good, now is when I crash. So, hopefully, with any luck, we'll be able to avoid that this time around. We'll go ahead and declare war, impose ideology. This will get us at war with Vodbar and the Praor Auxiliary. Now, it had nothing to do with the declaration of war, the crash, because the war, once it triggers here on the 6th, not the 6th, 7th? Do I need to vote yes on this? Where there is no justice, there can I think be I did. Peace. When this war triggered, all the war triggers went fine. All the countries who were supposed to declare war and be at war with each other, that worked fine. And it, it looks like the scripts are running fine. The, the only issues that I've run into are, um, oh fuck, one, one of our Federation member world's ideologies is not mapping correctly, like the, the, um, name that they get up here federation sector federation members one of these isn't populating quite correctly for whatever reason but i was it the andoria sector federation founders i don't know one of these wasn't quite working properly but the name pops up as it should and it doesn't have any gameplay impact so i found something that was habitually breaking but it wasn't breaking in a meaningful or noticeable manner so might as well have not been breaking at all and I appreciate that, oh, well, maybe it's causing a cascading failure. No, no, it definitely isn't. It's, it's very okay. So let's just start heading in here. Picking at a few systems at a time. You're going to go to guess. You are going to check out Worthy. Uh, Alejandro here. It's an excellent name for a star. What a dignified and revered, or name worthy of reverence and respect. More things should uh, be named something like that. Antonio, excellent. I have a very good friend who lives back in Indiana where I used to live, whose name is Anthony, and we used to call him Antonio or Tony or Tonio. I can't help but think of him when I see Antonio. It's a very positive association. Now what's upon us? This and <laughs> God willing, this will just run as normal. 
Now all these fleets can be upgraded. And I believe what they can be upgraded with... Ah, uh, no, we're not done with thermionic reactors, right? I was super excited about the thermionic reactors because these give us a shit ton of power and weapon damage bonus, which is huge for us. We're also getting psionics, which I don't know what this gives, but it sounds very cool, and hell, that's good enough. And transphasic torpedoes do, I believe, more armor damage? Yeah, so I'm also very excited about transph transphasic torpedoes for potential anti-borg builds. Complete. And I think with that we've encompassed the Herc. We might be done through that with that period of expansion and exploration. I'm not seeing I am seeing enemy Prey War armies or uh, navies up here. Fleets. We talked about this last time. Fleets up here. Uh well they're no slouches, but they're really not that terrifying either. Fourth fleet is, yeah, just taking on an outpost. This should be a cakewalk. The Vodbar have been beaten by the Borg. They've been beaten by the Kobali. They're in bad, bad shape. We're mostly just here to kick over their, <laughs> their sandcastle one more time. For their own good, right? The, the idea is that it's for their own good because if we don't guarantee them if we don't make them a protectorate then the borg can and will move in on them and if the borg do that there is nothing we can do to save them so this is a preemptive defensive action even though it looks like a invasion and acts like an invasion and sounds like an invasion and etc etc it may have all the characteristics of a hostile takeover but i guarantee you it is not. Well, sort of. It's a very long-term hostile takeover, so maybe the uh, the length of the duration dulls the the uh, intensity of it, the outrage of it a bit. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to be in a real fight down here. Uh, depending on... Okay, the Prey War are moving. We should have eyes on that because of our wonderful buddies here in the Devor Imperium who are not in this war. They can be our wonderful little spies. Thermionic reactors are hella exciting. Tetrionic power core. A tetrion is a type of subatomic particle that originates from subspace. By extruding the particle through field through different subspace manifolds in a controlled manner, it's possible to extract energy from shallower subspace strata without the natures of tetrionic radiation. This seems like it should result in... it's a station reactor. Ah, okay. Let's go ahead and poke around in our ship design just to see what we can pull off with these new reactors. Pergium gives 110, but these new ones give 200 each. Hopefully that will alleviate our need to do that. We can switch back over to transwarp drive. Oh, it's so close. Dervish device, I decided to opt out for science console. And the covariant shields, we are going with the type 7 ablative generators. So we actually have a slight power positive here. However, we will have to use mass stealth holes instead of Higgs inertial dampeners here. Dampers here because of that. <laughs> this looks good. That looks good. This is correct. That's good enough. That checks out. That more or less checks out. I'd like something that gives better evade, but that's okay. We get up to 66% evasion. Gravimetric Maelstrom torpedoes are 100% armor damage. They do a significant amount of damage on top of that, so they might be, yeah, they are our current ticket. I'd really love to replace these phasers with something that does more hull damage or armor damage, but we'll get to that. Maybe. But for now, the Defiant can be upgraded, and these are slightly better. Not very different, but slightly different in a hopefully noticeable way. Can I put in a holographic science station? I cannot. 
this three percent is not very high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Let's not nitpick too much. Okay, two. You are going to Kempf. One. You already have orders. Two. You're on your way. Four. You're on your way. Five. Could use some orders. Let's have you just go for Mondragon. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Worthy. Are there colonized systems in here? Oh yeah. No, go bomb that. <laughs> go. What are you doing? Go, go bomb people. And the seventh fleet. The seventh fleet can go for the bear system. Not bear taffy though. That's a shame. It'd be nice if that were referential. I hope it is. Is it A plus tier Seattleite? Excellent YouTuber and streamer. Streamer primarily, I think, these days. Ah, this is Telen, right? But we have the problem of Sherman's planet being a variable. Yeah, yeah, we have some weird shit going on down here. So instead, we'll just avoid that. Leave that for future Alex to manage. The Sevilla army is ready to head out. We're planning on clearing the way, so I think pretty safely I can just send you over here to enter orbit. Who is heading for this system? Is it you? Wait a minute. I do have someone assigned to head towards Marchand, yeah? I don't. Well, that's a good catch, Alex. Go sort that out. Getting a little ahead of myself. Where are the defenses looking like here? 757. Yeah, that's not... That's not bad. Wow, I'm impressed that they have that much. It looks like, yeah, they put down a planetary capital and local militia. What the fuck are you doing, AI? This has a local resource on it and you have blank tiles that this building could have gone on but instead you put local militia uh, what, just ignore it. ignore the bad sector AI just, just look away the Praelor fleets are entering the divorce system are nearing here they're coming in a reinforce but they're going to be too little too late I'm not seeing any fleets, again, belonging to the Vodvar themselves. I'm seeing some armies, but <laughs> I'm not at all worried about that. Not looking like any navies are headed into this area, so good. Looks like they're coming in for a direct confrontation, which works well for me. Let's begin a session talks. Ah, this is a pity. I don't really care to incorporate any of these. The Temerian Union are nice and big. The Kraylor Sanctum are fairly small. The Zakdorn are tiny. The Antedians, let's go for the Temerians. Temerians, Temerians. Let's call the whole thing off. They will do fine. Stefan is neutral. Let's move in here to the weed system. Ah, weed. Hell yeah, dog. Hell yeah. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> Some very interesting randomly generated names. I think I saw the Christ system a while ago. Uh, I was playing the... I was playing as the Dominion, and one of the systems over here randomly was named Christ. Like, oh wow, I didn't even know that was in the random generator. Yeah, not a thing here, but the weed system sure is. I imagine that must be something added through the mod, right? Like, that, that seems... Pushing it for Paradox? They have a lot of memes and references in there, but nothing... Uh, nothing like the Muhammad system or the, uh, <laughs> the 
Christ system is the Muhammad. Yeah, there are two Muhammad systems. There's the Muhammad and Muhammad systems. Wow. Okay, yeah, that's very hard to distinguish. All right, psionics gives our trait the our species the psionics trait. I have no idea what the fuck that does. I'm very interested to find out. Holographic hospitals, eh, core sector systems. I'm actually pretty into interstellar stock exchange is a unique building so that might be more worthwhile. Empire leader capacity actually lets us recruit army leaders, generals, and that might make this war go a lot faster so we'll research this. It's still 19 months out so it might not make a noticeable impact. Before we unpause I want to take a look at what exactly psionics does for us. Psionic masters with sufficient research, <laughs> research, research, we've unlocked the full potential of our telepathic abilities. Many members of society now possess advanced psionic powers capable of manipulating objects at a distance, sensing movements in subspace, and even having limited insights into the future. So as a result, we get engineering, physics, and society output enhanced and a little bit more happiness. Okay, that's good. I was expecting it to be a bit more overpowered. If you played as a people like the Vulcans, who are already intelligent, that would be exceptional. You would get a total bonus of 15, which would be fucking nuts. Or if the Binars were capable, and I don't know that they are, but if you can become telepathic or psionic Binars, you would have a total of 3% bonus to your physics and engineering output. Which would be astounding. Oop. Looks like the Vodwar First Fleet, which is 4.4k, is moving into the Brogan system. I'll just go move to intercept that. They have 17 ships, we have 11, but our 11 are definitely a, a, a few tiers above theirs. Construction complete. Yeah, we have patrol frigates. Oh, this is going to be a slaughter. A destroyer, a cruiser, and a battle cruiser. Man, the Vodvar are in the cannon. Pretty badass, but not these Vodvar. These Vodvar are a little, little lacking. I'm seeing the Borg here. Have the Borg also declared war on you? No. What are the Borg doing? Because I'm seeing Offensive Asset 11 here, which is a cone. Cones are really easy to kill. Are you? Still at war with the Dominion. Okay. Weed. What a fucking name. Go, go bomb this. The Sixth Fleet, why don't you just head for the capital? I may have actually sent something to the capital already. If I double up, whatever. That's, it's fine. This is going to be more or less a slaughter anyhow. So you all are ready to land. You are 1k strong. I cannot assign you a general as a leader, unfortunately. If we had that leader tech, we might be able to. But for now, this will have to make do. Our 1,000 strength troops should be able to beat their 724 strength troops. We might suffer some significant casualties, but this is a good test bed to see if the 4-1, or 8-2 deep strike army to artillery lines up and works pretty well. So right off the bat, I'm seeing the artillery get the fuck beaten out of it. So I'm losing incentivation incent incentive to incentivation incentivation incentive to give that another try of our species that can colonize arid worlds which do i like the most natural engineers for kelsis species natural sociologists for the sona quick learners charismatic I think it's the Vulcans. The Vulcans are intelligent and they're strong, so we'll get more minerals, we'll get more science. Yeah, hands down, this should be a Vulcan planet. If you're playing this game very 
mechanically focused and not really engaging in the war so much, there's a lot of very obvious choices, like Vulcans are really fucking good, and you should probably just colonize with species like the Vulcans all of the time, because although it's it's kind of interesting to make a, a well varied and diversified group for uh, civilization, in reality, the Vulcans are probably your best bet for creating something better. Did we just go ahead and plop it down on top of that? This is a lot of tiles. I This gives an adjacency bonus, which is huge. If we can get double that adjacency bonus, that would be fucking nuts. I wonder if these stack on top of each other. They may not, but I'm curious enough to try out. And I, I want to point out, this has Pergium on two different deposits. This is a remarkable world. Yeah, I definitely colonize Duckworth. I'll be happy to oversee Duckworth private or privately. Hmm, no, not what I not what I meant. Um, personally, to personally oversee it, because it seems like a excellent test bed for not even a test bed, an excellent foundation. All right. Fourth fleet, you're gonna move up here and blow up these armies as soon as they pop out. These armies shouldn't be a problem. They shouldn't ever get the opportunity to land on anything anyhow, but this will affect the war score, so let's go for it. This war or this invasion is still dragging on. We are down to four. We haven't lost any we haven't lost anything yet. It looks like our Two of our troops have disengaged, though two of theirs have disengaged and they've lost significantly more than just two troops. We're down to 770 invader strength, but theirs has been cut in half, whereas our strength is about three quarters of our starting number. So pretty good. Divinian. I was gonna say I'm not crazy about the system, I don't really want to take it. Well. It's a good thing that I'm not planning on taking it then. Keegan. Okay, you're doing some very weird stuff. That's fine. You'll probably make it A-OK. -okay. You are idled. Why don't we have you go all the way here? Swooping in and taking all of these minor uh, outposts rather than star bases might not make the most efficient use of our time, but it's not bad. Did I assign something here? I did. I did assign troops there. Delightful. I don't know that I've assigned anything to Mondragon by itself. Ah, you're moving there. Okay. And these transport fleets are significantly slower, so let's grab the Ada Serpentis army. Tell you to go into orbit here. What kind of army strength are we looking at? Unknown. Delightful. And the bear system, I know that I've moved into. Divinian, I probably can't tell. Wow. Alright, so the Titan army is going to enter orbit here. Why the fuck is this so well garrisoned? You have one local militia. You have a division headquarters. I thought these were mutually exclusive. I thought that local militia upgraded into division headquarters. You also have clone vats, which don't give defensive armies. I thought that they did. Huh, well, it might just be these two buildings. Still, it's impressive. Nothing I can't deal with, but more than I was expecting to deal with. Samuelson. Now, you're leaving this system, but it's clear to me you haven't taken out that starbase, so let's take a step back and think about things for a little bit. Is this planetary invasion still going on? No, we won. We did suffer no losses, just needs to make some repairs. Delightful. Let's get you. Ah, I reordered you. No, go to Cartella. We could probably invade Cartel right now, he says, clicking the attack button, not waiting for reinforcements like he was suggesting, or at least inferring that he was going to. What's to say? Now, I know there's a war going on. 
And that's, you know, noteworthy and worthy of consideration, but we're also sitting on a bunch of unused energy, and I know for a fact there are plenty, I mean plenty, of colonizable planets that just need a little help terraforming into more utilizable forms. Rocky still can't be terraformed. I might be wrong about this. We might have, uh, we may be down to just demon and glacial class planets, which I've said in the past, I'm fairly committed to just handing off to the Breen and Thulians once we incorporate them. Iota Geminorium. This is geocrystalline, so I believe that means it can turn into marshland. Yeah. And then this entire system will be colonizable, which is ducking thoughts. Let's check you out. You're landing. Are you winning? It looked like 400 to 800. Yeah, we're winning, just not as well as I would like to. Leave it to me to nitpick winning. Well, yeah, we're winning, but we're still losing troops, so it's not really winning. <laughs> and on to Jeffrey. How's the war score looking here? We have 31% occupation, 0% war exhaustion. They're sitting on 3% war exhaustion because we haven't really had prolonged space battles. The prey war fleets here are following the first fleet attacking starbase is the assigned order here so hopefully we'll be able to intercept those and add to our war score a little bit trans basic torpedoes are very exciting self-replicating mines a little less so i don't see anything here super impending so i'm gonna go for this these are cool uh, it's very deep space nine plot relevant our researchers have developed a new mine capable of replicating itself Replicators transfer material to one another where it's needed in the field through networking. The neighbors of a detonated mine replace the last mine material. However, wow, man, this is grammatically butchered from the last mine, period, new sentence. Material, comma, however, comma, comes from at least, or material, however, comma. Uh, material comma, however, comes from at least 65 different mines. As stored material begins to run out, the mines have a zero-point extraction system for matter replenishment. That, that's a really, uh... That's a hell of a thing to brush over and just kind of insert there. There's a ZPM aspect to it. A zero-point energy or zero-point extraction is the idea that in um in space in space with nothing in it there's there's radiant energy just because of light passing through or heat or whatever and even though it's not present in any particles in that space it's still present there it's it's the inherent energy i'm butchering this explanation it's the inherent energy in space time and the idea of zpm tech is that you're able to more or less literally pull something out of nothing get energy out of this infinitesimally small thing and be able to turn subspace itself into or uh space itself into or uh t not space come on come on alex uh space time there we go space time itself into a, a power source so if you were able to just extract material from space time or subspace even that's pretty noticeable that's that's noteworthy that's that's an infinite power machine right now right there or an infinite material machine why the fuck would anyone ever go to war if you had the technology to just literally get energy and therefore material because you have replicators and holodecks why would you ever fight over anything because you're very post scarcity at that point I guess like ideological differences or something like that, but even that seems like one hell of an edge case. What whatever, it's 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 a TV show. And it's it's a dated TV show at that. Zero point just sounds cool and sci-fi y, so that might be the reason it's thrown in there. Spaceport okay, you attack. are intercepting this. We have a spaceport under attack. I'm gonna pause. Take a look, it's going to be in the Keegan system, so we're gonna take Jeffrey here, redirect you to take out this Praelor fleet. Ah, oh, no, no, this is a Vodwar fleet. Well, all the better. All right, we're all wrapped up and worthy. Delightful. 
Why don't you go up to the wheat system? Fantastic. Mm, are these armies at their best? The Omicron Theta army is not. Ah, now this is a slight issue of reinforcing. So I made such a point to build all of these out of Klingons. I think Sevilla Prime has Klingons on it. Am I wrong? I'm right. Okay, we need another Deep Strike 4 Klingon to reinforce this. I, it might be worth colonizing with Klingons up here, even if the planet isn't perfect, just to... Ooh, yeah, and I'm colonizing Duckworth, so that would be a very forward... forward-based... Uh, uh, point of influence, point of control, system... I'm trying to say system in a way without saying planet again without being needlessly redundant hot damn do i love the defiant <laughs> heavy escorts are really really good and yeah yeah it helps when the ai doesn't manage things properly and you didn't give the ai enough bonuses to start the game and you really spiraled out of control to where only the biggest baddest people on the map might potentially even vaguely pose you a threat but even they not really i know but well let me let me just <laughs> ruminate all the same yeah i've i've been doing some test games under much harder difficulties under the hardest difficulty with the scaling difficulty added on top of it in fact and the game's playable. It's it's much more challenging and tricky. At times, it can feel like the AI get too much help. Like, they don't deserve to be uh, in the power spirals that they're in. Like, they it doesn't feel like the AI has earned the borders that they have. It's not through good management or clever decisions or you know anything really admirable that they're holding their empire together it can be very transparent that it's just the massive amount of bonuses they're getting from the game that's helping them hold together which can be a little it can be a turnoff it can be <laughs> a sizable turnoff like oh you're not it's like when someone is rich from inherited money like you know, a just just random example here, the president of the United States of America, very hard to respect because of like, yeah, you have money, but it was given to you. So any any sense of ownership or responsibility over that money or wealth or welfare can't rightfully be attributed to you if you inherited it. Now, if you reinvested it and fostered it and made it grow, well, that's admirable. <laughs> Absolutely. But it still can be a little bleh looking at the AI nations and the bonuses they get by necessity to survive. And just like, this is ludicrous. <laughs> The AI is getting too much help here. It should be fine on its own. But it's not fine on its own, and really reprogramming the reprogramming. Why is this so hard for me to say? Reprogramming, there we go. The AI is beyond the scope, I believe, of any mod team. That seems like it needs to be an in house process. To modify, revise, and improve upon. Improve upon the Stellaris AI. I read a very interesting post, well, a provocative post is probably a better way to phrase this, on the subreddit sometime within the last week, talking about how the feeling of Stellaris for them has lost 
uh, this isn't their exact phrasing, but lost a lot of its luster since the early days. When they first played Stellaris, they felt like, especially when playing as a human species, they were really exploring humanity's future. Going out, exploring, finding anomalies, and making a place for themselves in the universe. And feeling like it was more science than science fiction at times. And they spoke very positively and highly. And, um... affectionately of it but then they contrasted that with what we have now which it doesn't matter if you're playing human or space foxes or space dragon or space lizard or weird robot or blob hive mind they all more or less play the same way now i i know Obviously, there are mechanical differences between the way that different nations work, but they're not substantial and they don't feel meaningfully different. They feel different enough to justify uh, kind of a unsatisfying downloadable content, but not enough to justify putting them in the game. Like, it just doesn't feel well-rounded enough or well-fleshed out enough. It can feel very lacking. And this person was saying that because of the changes, and I really should just attribute it to who the person is, but truth be told, it's been so long I don't even know if I could find the Reddit thread if I wanted to. I probably could, but it would take too long. Is a more honest answer. I could probably find it, but I'm lazy. Uh, they, they talked about the game feeling like it lost a lot of its soul through the additional narrative packs and uh, content additions to the game. I don't disagree. One of Stellaris's major flaws is that narratively it can ring hollow. It tries to offer consistent narrative through anomalies and things like that, but once you hit the phase of the game we're in right now, where you're out of new systems to explore or colonize, you're done through all the colonizing events, and you. I mean, Stellaris used to have more internal strife than it does now, and it doesn't anymore which I find incredibly boring you just kind of sit and fight people and I mean I've spoken to this before armies in Stellaris suck and the narrative basically becomes whatever you want it to be unlike unlike you four or hearts of iron for where you can start as a small power and fight against these big already powerful ai who have advantages of better industry or economy or army or technology or whatever in stellaris more or less you and the rest of the ai nation start on a level playing field now they can be advanced ai or fallen empires or they can be like late game crises or mid game crises or whatever but more or less it feels like it doesn't feel like an uphill battle it doesn't feel like there's a real sense of accomplishment in taking out the ai because we start out on your level or slightly above your level or below your level in the case of primitive civilizations but they suck the AI sucks at managing things and cannot meaningfully, reasonably present a significant challenge, particularly to more seasoned players. It's the, uh, the planet management, sector management that they operate under, the rule sets that they use, are suboptimal. And nonsensical at times. Like, we were just looking at one of these Vodwar planets with it building there's a there's a special deposit there and they're not taking advantage of the deposit instead they put a society research thing down when they could have instead put a building that has both the deposit and the society research and the ai should be programmed to know that that's a building that they can put down so the ai should just wait until it has the tech to put that down to put it down rather than build it and remodel it later which will result in a higher net cost and probably not meet that uh, cost in terms of benefits of building something sooner rather than just waiting. I don't know, maybe maybe it is worthwhile, maybe my math is not good, but my math isn't that bad. Alright, we have global environment colony kits, lowers terraforming costs, which is nice but unnecessary, holographic augmented reality overlays, which gives us 
some new stations, operation stations, that's great armor regen, but what we have is pretty good already, or empathic unity, which gives us monthly unity bonus. Now, unity we're not going to need significantly more for very long, but so this is relevant now, we might as well get it now. Instilling telepathic or psionic abilities throughout a population can result in a situation where every citizen can feel what everyone else feels. Great anger rising up into a tsunami, or great calm, peaceful as a calm sea. Ah, well, saying calm twice there is peaceful as a still sea or as a serene ocean. A synonym would be better than repeating the same word twice. Well, whatever. It communicates the idea effectively. If redundant way. You are moving over here to intercept this. Delightful. Are they gonna win? Oh, they may or may not. We'll take it out either way. We do need to move on to Selenia over here. I wanna take a look at you should be in orbit of No, I gave you orders and then you fucked off of them. I wanted you to border Divinian, or inter-orbit of Divinian. Tetrionic power court. Now I'm fascinated to see if that actually gave us something. Omega facility. Omega facility gives 200 energy. God damn. Uh, but lowers habitability by 10%. I'm never going to build this. It's empire unique, so you can only ever have it on one planet. That's pretty crazy, though. If you place this with other things that increase habitability, it'll be a net zero. That, that's quite good, especially on smaller maps. This would be significant. The Omega Molecule is synonymous with immense power and destruction. Its origins are unknown, and synthetic forms are extremely unstable when they explode. And, oh, extremely unstable and, comma, when they explode, comma, release a vast amount of energy this comma after energy is unnecessary that even subspace is destroyed rendering warp travel impossible quite cool so oh wow that's that's a blue back screen there you do not give me yeah you don't give me these power plants but if i go down 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 here and look into you you now have tetrionic power port boost weapon damage by 60 percent nothing to scoff at you have peregrine assault fighters eh, it's not worth revising these i'm not going to use them anyway i think we have a decent distribution of armies here i'm being a bit lazy about this and haphazard but i'm i'm at peace with that uh hazari has been taken out so let's get selena Selena, uh, Nysel. That's what you have. Armies are tiny. You have Komar slaves. How did you get Komar slaves? Where did they come from? Hmm. Well, whatever. You have them. I suppose that's the, uh, that's the more notable po <clears throat> points here. Oh, hiccup. No, don't tell me all the backgrounds are blue. Game. Uh, you know, the blue background. Yellow. Yellow. <laughs> That's not due to me uninstalling the Skybox mod. Well, it may be. I only just noticed this, so I'm assuming this just kicked in. And it crashed. Okay, so interesting. Uh, I'm going to put in a cut here, but, but that's very interesting because this is the first time I'm seeing any visual glitch accompanying it, and I don't think this is associated with the mod I uninstalled. I can replug it in, but I don't think that should make a significant difference. It looked to me like the textures dropped off, and well, I have this open, and I have this platform. Let's, let's go and check documents, Paradox Interactive, Stellaris, logs? Logs, error? Got anything interesting in here? Um, generic Starbase Citadel entity has no attach point. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah. Giving a lot of out of memory errors. So it may be that the. Hmm. But it, it's all out of 
memory errors in relation to Paradox Audio. SDL failed allocation of PDX underscore audio. SDL error out of memory tried to allocate. Wow. Damn. Hmm. So it might be me running it at a high speed is causing some errors here. Or it may be something else. I don't know. My memory, in terms of RAM and processing power, should be more than six more than enough. Country scope contains invalid object to file common slash buildings zero zero underscore buildings text line five nine nine five. Interesting. Uh, failed to choose personality type for ah, it's the Nausicans. Nausicaa sector with the ethics fanatic xenophile pacifist. The uh, the Nausicans are having an identity crisis. Then audio problems. Federation Starbase Citadel entity has no attach point named Part Seven. Tons of spam about the Nausicaa sector. Missing sound menu over one. Uh, country scope contains invalid omit object that file common scripted triggers sth country triggers txt lines 203 205 203 and 205 but then that dissipates so it might have no it repeats um once twice three times and it happened when i first booted up too so that might actually be an issue couldn't find texture files it's interesting at the end there the the problem definitely was the game wasn't loading the texture files but i'm not getting an error in the error log about not loading texture files so real weird any woo any woo anywho i'm gonna cut this here i'm gonna keep streaming um if you're watching on youtube make sure to comment share like subscribe next video will be up tomorrow until then toodaloo take care make sure to comment share like uh, did i just say that I'm getting real deja vu. If I just said that, whatever, you know the deal. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Toodaloo.